some guys got caught out last year, basically, by not looking natural. You know what I mean? I'm talking about in the secondary, not not really fitting what the what the situation called for, and uh, that's what you've got to have guys that just instinctively, you know. Like I said, move to the football, one, one form or fashion. The football, meaning whether it's in the air or in somebody's uh, arm uh, running down the field. And uh, that's what they definitely got to move to. And I really do believe, uh, and I've said this all along, as you know, since uh, since it was revealed, you know, Ryan Day, when I after Kirk Herbstreit said what he said, then I texted him. Yeah, he's thinking seriously about being just the head coach and letting, of course, uh, Brian Hartline run the offense. He's going to still dabble in it. You know he is. He's the head coach. But his eyes on what's going on defensively are going to be much more aware than they were this time a year ago. He, you know, and this this is this Jim Knowles defense, and we, we talked about this last year, guys. You remember this. This Jim Knowles defense was always going to evolve because, as Spencer, you kept repeating last year, he's got better talent on hand across the board from a just a pure talent standpoint than he had at Oklahoma State, which means you don't necessarily have to come up with tricky schemes to get the job done. you got to put guys – you want guys in position to make plays. And sometimes getting guys in position to make plays means you have them on the field. You know what I mean? And let them make plays. Like the Bosa brothers, you know. You can move them from one side to the other, but final, you know, third and eight, they're probably going to get to the quarterback, Nick especially anymore. It's the same idea. Let these guys do what they do best. And I think Ryan Day having more more attention spent on the defense, it's not that he's taking over the defense, but the best players you think are going to play, you know, are the guys that offer you that just that electric electricity that you need. And uh uh, at certain positions, and I think that's going to pay dividends for this team. I really do. We'll see. I, you know, when we're talking in November about Ryan Day being a head coach, a mega, as I call it, a megaphone carrying head coach. I'm sure he won't have a megaphone. A tower climbing head coach. I'm sure he won't climb the tower, but he'll be out there roaming the field. I think this is where it's going to pay dividends because sometimes when you got a guy as talented as Jim Knowles, and Jim Knowles has said, "Hey, this year it's kind of like a." I'm paraphrasing here. It's kind of like a last year was all about installation. This year is about take no prisoners, meaning, hey, if a guy isn't getting the job done, we move on to something else. Last year was more about the rudiments of the scheme. This year is going to be more about getting after people in whatever form or fashion uh, that dictates. And uh, having having uh, Ryan Day out there to help him in that regard, meaning suggestions, not mandates, but suggestions, I think will pay huge dividends for this team. You know, Tim, I've been driving a – I'm going to use a, a, a paraphrase like you do, an analogy like you do, Tim, because I've learned so much from you. Yeah. Uh-oh. I've been, I've, Homeschool, I've been ladies driving, and gentlemen. I've been driving a 2013 Chevy Cruze for a long time, and if I were to get into a an Indy car right now, as you like to always talk about, I think it'd take me a while to adjust to yes. it and know that I probably don't have to hit the gas as hard. I don't have to, to do a lot of things that I do in my Chevy Cruze. Wait a minute, let me, let me interrupt you. Your analogy is a little bit off. Oklahoma State was, I, I, was good, but it was more like an Indy Lights car compared to an Indy car. Go ahead now. <laughs> no, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep mine out. This is my All right. analogy. Too. All right, yeah, it uh, sounds better. So, you know, Jim Knowles was had to do a lot of things to get that that Oklahoma State defense up to speed. Yeah. When you're running with an Indy car engine. You don't have to do as many things to get the same results as you do in the, in the smaller car. So, like, at Oklahoma State, he had to do all those things. Yep. You know, he had to worry about which three-star guy or which four-star guy fits in the system the best. Yep. Now he can say, hey, Sonny Styles, you're one of the 11 best guys. Go play football. And it, it, it does get a little easier, I have to imagine, as – you know, and I'm not going to hold us up on this because because we're running kind of long on the show. But yeah, but Spence, I want to ask you this, Spence. Let me interrupt. I mean, I know I get in trouble for interrupting, but but the bottom line is, uh, do you think he leaned a little bit too heavily on the talent? Meaning, some of the things the uh, secondary, the the secondary, I don't think played up to the level that we're talking about. You know, last year uh, from a talent standpoint, I, mean, I, I I think he got bit a little bit by leaning a little bit too more too much sometimes on the four- and five-star athlete. What, what do you think about that? Well, I'm going to throw it to Andy, but I'm going to say plain and simple, Tim, I think he leaned too far, too much on, on who fit where. 
He's talk, he's trying to figure out, okay, you fit this adjuster role. You fit this this nickel role. And yeah. Instead of getting the 11 best on the field, hey, you fit this defensive tackle role for this exact formation. No. You know, Teron Vincent and Ty Hamilton were your two best defensive tackles. They should be on the field. You know, JT Tuimolo, I don't care if he's, you know, how many snaps he's played. He needs to be out there ahead of Javante Jean-Baptiste. And that's nothing against those other guys. I think yeah. you're going to see more with Sonny Styles, where, hey, you know, this guy was this guy is better, plain and simple, than Tanner McAllister was last year. He's probably going to get better results, Andy. And I think that's going to help this defense way more than trying to think about who fits where exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's starting to learn that too. Even with the defensive front, he mentioned like, yeah, I want to have the Jack as part of the long-term vision, but also Ohio State is known for its great defensive front. We have a great defensive front, and we can't just get away from that. And I think that with the secondary, you know, it's going to be interesting because with the Sonny Styles discussion, yes, if he's on the field, that means one of those other guys isn't probably. And then you're talking about, well, who is it? They brought in Jahad Carter from Syracuse. They have Josh Proctor, who's back for his sixth year. You have Lathan Ransom, who's back and was a Jim Thorpe semifinalist. I mean, there's a, a really crowded room back there at the safety position. I didn't even mention Cameron Martinez. A lot of guys who have playing experience but didn't necessarily play their best, especially towards the end of the last season. Who is going to get ousted if you're putting Sonny Styles in? That's what I'm interested in. And I think that does show, like, if Jim Knowles really is hard and fast about getting Sonny Styles on the field early and often – that might show us that he is ready to kind of abandon these fitted roles and just more focusing on the talent and who's best to play on the field. Yeah. And we saw, and we saw like I brought up a while ago, we saw some failures in the secondary, um, but some of that was because of guys not getting to the quarterback. Like we talked, it, it, it is a symbiotic relationship out there between all three levels. Uh, but we just saw some guys who push came to shove at crunch time. Didn't make plays. I mean, sometimes we're in position and didn't make plays, or sometimes were in position, and uh, for whatever reason, uh, didn't get there. Meaning, uh, from a from a either a technique standpoint or just physically uh, got overwhelmed. So uh, that's what they're looking for more this spring is just guys that can bring it every play. I think the ingredients are there. I look out there on that field. I like Sonny Styles. I like Jahad Carter a lot. I mean, uh, and I like I like four of those at least four of those cornerbacks. I think Igbenosin, Igbenosin's uh, presence, uh, the transfer from Ole Miss, Davis and Igbenosin, I think he's going to really juice that situation up. You like a healthy Jordan Hancock at corner. And, of course, Denzel Burke, you talk about a sophomore jinx. He had it every way, every every form you can get it from physically to maybe losing his confidence, et cetera. I think the ingredients are there, but I think there's something to be said for putting your best five out there, like uh, Spencer was talking about, at crunch time, and hey, man, and go at it, right? And, uh, you know, th this is yours to win or lose. 